Vejam esse treinamento de anciãos para poder reavaliar o cargo, os privilégios, como é feito. Esse vídeo aqui foi vazado na internet, mostrando o treinamento que deve ser feito ou como se deve reavaliar um ancião. E esse ancião aqui vai ser reavaliado por conta da filha fazer faculdade. Exatamente isso, meus amigos. O um membro que tem cargo na congregação, seja ancião, servo, pioneiro, que fizer faculdade ou tiver a sua filha ou seu filho fazendo faculdade, deve ser reavaliado o seu cargo. E é isso que vai mostrar no vídeo. Então, preste atenção para a gente fazer os devidos comentários. Vai estar em inglês e dublado em português. Brothers, thank you for considering this matter regarding Brother Brown and the impact that his family situation is having on the congregation. I asked you, brothers, to review his qualifications as an elder after we spoke, and Brother Brown had an opportunity to explain to me some of the decisions that he's made for his family. I'm aware that you, brothers, have considered this matter before, but since then, another one of Brother Brown's daughters have enrolled in a school for higher education, which raises questions as to how this affects the congregation. When we make decisions, it's important that we consider the conscience of the congregation as well as the elder body. Brother Brown, I know this can't be easy for you, and it's not easy for us either. Please be assured that we love you, and we only want what's best for you and your family. Remember, you're among friends here. So please feel free to express yourself and to answer any questions that your fellow elders may have. Brothers, we are obligated to put the interests of the congregation first. Brothers, with all due respect, I don't agree with you that the congregation is disturbed about my or my family situation. I've been in the congregation for 20 years. I know the publishers very well, and I'm sure no one is disturbed about my daughter's pursuing higher education. Um, as far as my younger daughter is concerned, she was judicially reproved, but it wasn't announced to the congregation, so she's repentant. And no one has approached me uh, expressing that they're disturbed about me supporting my daughters seeking higher education, trying to better themselves. It's not like they're leaving the truth. Brother Brown, thank you for expressing how you feel. Let's give your fellow elders an opportunity to express their observations or concerns. Brothers, are there any comments or questions that you have for Brother Brown? Brother Anderson, please. Brother Brown, it is true. Some of the congregation have been negatively affected. They've been disturbed by the example of your daughters pursuing higher education. Uh, You've openly talked about wanting the best life for your daughters. And this has given some the impression that the only way to get the best life, it's not through spiritual things, but through secular pursuits. Uh, some of the congregation are even confused about what the organization has stated regarding pursuing higher education. Uh, in fact, Sister Single's daughter is considering pursuing higher education because of the example of your daughters. Deixa eu parar aqui bem rapidinho, né? Veja só que perigo que está acontecendo. O ancião, pai das suas filhas, é, tem uma filha mais velha que vai para a universidade e a congregação está perturbada porque a filha de um ancião está indo para a universidade. Que coisa absurda, que controle. E esse que está falando na ponta, esse daqui, o negão, ele é o superintendente de circuito. E os outros três são os anciãos, juntamente com o, o gordinho lá na ponta. É... E aí vejam só o seguinte. Somos seus amigos. A amizade na, neste grupo é totalmente condicional. Todas as frases que são faladas aqui são tudo treinado. Nós amamos muito você. Não é nada espontâneo. Tudo é treinado. 
quem participou de alguma comissão, ou quem participou de alguma reunião, ou de, um, de, um, de, de um, uma visita de pastreio, você vão ouvir essas frases, porque é tudo treinado. Não é nada espontâneo, nada do coração. Até as frases são tudo treinadas. A forma que você vai falar, ah, nós amamos você, somos seus amigos, se expresse. Quanto mais o cara se expressar, mais o cara vai se estrepar. Porque você não pode falar o que pensa. Você tem que falar de, da forma que eles querem ouvir. Tá? Baseado, é, o, o Negão até falou, o presidente segundo falou o seguinte, é, queremos o melhor para a congregação. Na verdade, vocês querem seguir o manual do corpo governante. É o melhor para o corpo governante. É isso. E a congregação está perturbada porque o filho, a filha do ancião vai fazer a universidade. Está perturbada porque o corpo governante fala que a universidade é algo do, é, é, é coisa de quem é materialista, de quem quer ganhar o mundo, só que é algo para a pessoa se profissionalizar, para ter uma profissão. Se você quer ser um médico, a forma de você ser médico é fazendo um curso superior. Se você quer ser advogado, não existe outra forma. Você não é obrigado a ser um pintor, você não é obrigado a ser um mecânico, não que essas profissões sejam piores, mas são profissões que não exigem ensino superior. Ninguém é obrigado, cada um tem o direito de escolha, mas o corpo governante tem o direito de escolher a vida profissional das pessoas. É mais ou menos isso. E aí esse irmão falou essas questões, mas vai piorar ainda a situação e eu vou deixar vocês à vontade para vocês verem o vídeo, sem interrupção. Thank you, Brother Anderson. Brother Williams, please. And, and just because the brothers and sisters have not approached you about this matter, doesn't mean that they're not disturbed by what they see. They understand that it's a personal decision and that's something that you have to decide, but it still doesn't mean that your freeness of speech is not affected. In fact, the freeness of speech of the entire body of elders, as well as how successful we are as shepherds has been affected as well. Um, as Brother Anderson mentioned, when we promote the full-time ministry as the best way of life, this situation has now influenced how some of the congregation uh, set that as a goal or even want to set that as a goal for their life. Brother Miller? Andy, the scriptural qualifications at 1 Timothy chapter 3 say that an overseer in verse 4 and 5 should be a man presiding over his own household in a fine manner, having his children in subjection with all seriousness. Verse 3 says they should be reasonable, not quarrelsome. Now, I know this is difficult for you. It is difficult for us to... Don't tell me about being difficult. When we started this discussion, you all brother said you, you love me and my family. Right now, I'm not feeling it. You've been nothing but negative. Brother Brown, thank you for your comments. Please take a seat in the other room and we'll call you back when we make our decision. O cara tá retado. Essa parte agora é a parte de tesourar o ancião sem ele estar presente. E vocês vão ver totalmente algo robótico, não espontâneo, totalmente controlador. É isso que vocês vão ver. Então já deixa aqui o teu gostei. Deixa a tua opinião a respeito desse treinamento. Compartilha para pessoas que não sabem disso. Está aqui um vídeo oficial da Torre de Vigia falando sobre faculdade. Tá? Esse vídeo aqui não vai para público. Esse vídeo aqui é um vídeo interno. E aí, estão falando. Né? O ancião vai perder o seu cargo porque a filha está fazendo faculdade. E aí até eles falaram. Agora todo mundo da congregação quer se inspirar na sua filha porque vai fazer faculdade. Ah, os jovens estão querendo fazer faculdade. Meu Deus, que absurdo! Os jovens estão querendo fazer faculdade? Não, os jovens eles não querem imoralidade, eles não querem ficar. Eles querem fazer faculdade! Meu Deus, que absurdo! É isso que acontece de forma interna. Vídeo oficial da Torre de Vigia. Vídeo oficial da Torre de Vigia. E agora vocês vão ver a segunda parte do treinamento, de como funciona para poder avaliar esse critério. E vocês vão ver os comentários dessas pessoas neste momento. 
Prestem atenção. Now, brothers, please open your shepherd book to chapter 8. You'll notice paragraph 30 discusses when a member of an appointed man's household pursues higher education. Essa parte que vocês estão vendo aí é a parte citada pelo superintendente de circuito no vídeo que vocês acabaram de ver. Ele está mostrando essa parte exatamente que foi citada, tá? No livro Pastoreio e Rebanho de Deus, que é um livro exclusivo para os anciãos, que diz aí, quando um irmão ou alguém da sua família que mora na, me é, é, na mesma casa ingressar no ensino superior, quando o irmão... É, quando um irmão, a sua esposa ou seus filhos ingressam no ensino superior, os anciãos devem avaliar se o irmão mostra, pelo seu modo de vida, que coloca o reino em primeiro lugar. Ele ensina a sua família a buscar primeiro o reino? Respeita o que o escravo fiel diz sobre os perigos do ensino superior? Olha só, a sua conduta e as coisas que ele fala mostram que é pessoa espiritual? Como é que ele é visto pela congregação? Por que, que ele ou a família decidiram entrar no ensino superior? Estão a ter dificuldades em assistir às reuniões, ter uma boa participação no ministério ou participar em outras atividades espirituais por causa do ensino superior? Eles têm alvos espirituais? Essas são as perguntas que os anciãos devem chegar à conclusão para poder reavaliar alguém que tem algum membro fazendo faculdade. É exatamente isso. E aqui está outra parte também do livro Pastorei, que vocês podem observar aí, que nessa parte aqui, ó, fala de como deve ser feito. Quando for necessário reavaliar as qualificações de um ancião, o corpo de ancião deve considerar o assunto na presença dele, dando o seguinte passo. Depois de orar e pedir a orientação de Jeová, todos os fatos devem ser apresentados. Mantenha um ambiente respeitoso e tranquilo que contribua para a reunião. Dê em tempo suficiente para o irmão dizer como se sente e responder a qualquer pergunta que lhe seja feita. Peça a opinião dele sobre os pontos que estão a ser considerados a respeito de suas qualificações. Peçam-lhe que saia para que os outros anciãos continuem a sua consideração e decida qual será a recomendação. Convide-no a voltar. Se a decisão for recomendar a sua remoção, informe-nos e explique os motivos bíblicos que levaram a essa decisão. É o que eles vão fazer na segunda parte da, do treinamento no vídeo que vocês And vão ver. Paragraph 32, which outlines the procedure for reviewing the qualifications of such a man. Now, what are your observations? Brother Williams, please. Brother Brown has served faithfully for many years. Uh, but the question that's within paragraph number 30 is important. How is he viewed by the congregation? Sad to say, the actions of his family have had have caused him to lose the respect of the congregation in fact some publishers have mentioned that if they need scriptural advice on family life they'll just talk to another elder thank you for those comments brother williams brother anderson please the same paragraph says if an appointed brother's children pursue higher education does his life pattern show that he puts kingdom interests first in his life I don't think any of us can honestly say that Brother Brown's family is viewed as putting kingdom interests first in their life. Uh, their conversations aren't spiritual, and I don't think the family, the wife, or the daughters have ever regular or auxiliary pioneered. That is a cause for concern. Brother Miller, please. I agree with those comments. And in addition, the last question in paragraph 30 asks, Does the pursuit of higher education interfere with regular meeting attendance, meaningful participation in field service, or other theocratic activities? His girls are not visible in the ministry, and because of their class schedule, they rarely are at meetings. It's obvious that spiritual things have become second place in their life. So it appears that they're drifting spiritually. Brother Anderson, please. Yeah. And 1 Peter 5, 3 says an overseer should be an example to the flock. Uh, but the reality is the family is a poor example and they're having an influence on other young ones in the congregation who are now also considering pursuing higher education. 
Now looking at paragraph 31, what would you brother say has been his response to the counsel that has been given? Brother Miller. It hasn't been well. He's been belligerent. He's accused us of overstepping. And he keeps insisting that this is a personal family decision. He never took into consideration the feelings of the congregation. Uh, unfortunately, he no longer has the freeness of speech as mentioned at 1 Timothy 3.13. Hmm. Brother Anderson. And as it says in 1 Timothy 3.3, 3, that overseer needs to be, uh, or excuse me, should be reasonable and not quarrelsome. And James 3.17 reminds us wisdom from above is peaceable, reasonable, ready to obey. Uh, but sadly, he doesn't accept counsel from any of us. Uh, when we've counseled him on matters, well, he justifies it or minimizes it. Um, he bullies the body. It's his experience and his opinions that have dictated outcomes. And I'm sure you've seen that today. I did observe that. Thank you for those thoughts. Brother Williams, do you have something more to add? Yes, I did. Uh, initially, the first time uh, we discussed this, we agreed that he doesn't have the respect of the body. But Brother Brown is very outspoken <laughs> and he's very skilled. He's very skilled at manipulating the rest of the body to adjusting our viewpoints towards his viewpoint. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that. He can be rather persuasive. Is there anything else that you brothers would like to add to our consideration? I didn't have anything more. No. Okay. So we need to come to a decision regarding his qualifications. And we'll need to tell him the scriptural reasons why that decision is made when we invite him back to the room. Do you mean you want us to tell him? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, Andy always has such a hot temper. That's why it's usually easier to go along with his demands. While that may have been true in the past, I know that you brothers want to do things that are in harmony with Jehovah's Holy Spirit and the direction from his organization. After weighing all the facts and comparing them against the scriptural qualification and remembering to whom we're accountable, what do you brothers recommend? Brother Anderson. I'm disappointed to say it, but I feel like we should recommend his deletion. I don't think we can say that he continues to have free nips of speech or that he's an example in presiding over his family. I agree. In addition, he's neither peaceable or reasonable when things don't go his way. All in favor of this recommendation? Okay, it's unanimous. So we have considered the guidelines from Jehovah's Organization. You brothers have provided me with the scriptural reasons and I support your recommendation. Brother Anderson and Brother Williams, would you like to express to Brother Brown the reasons for this decision? And Dan, could you please ask Brother Brown back to the room? so that we can inform him of our unanimous decision and we can show him from the scriptures how we reach this decision. Brother Brown, thank you for your patience and waiting. After prayerfully weighing all of the facts and considering the scriptures, the body of elders unanimously decided to recommend your deletion as an elder, and I agree with them. The brothers will now explain to you the reasons why we reached this decision. Brother Brown, as you know, 1 Timothy 3 verses 4 and 5 uh, says that an overseer should be a man presiding over his household in a fine manner, having his children in subjection with all seriousness. The elders unanimously agree that your decision to support and encourage your daughters to pursue higher education has damaged their spirituality. 
in verse 3 says that as elders, we need to be reasonable and not quarrelsome. But we've observed for some time now that uh, when dealing with matters, even this one, you've not responded kindly. You've been quarrelsome. You've even shouted at us. And so when we weighed all the facts and we looked at the scriptural qualifications in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and Titus 1, uh, well, you no longer meet some of those qualifications. Do you understand the reasons, the scriptural reasons for our decision? Are you kidding me? I don't want to hear any more of this nonsense. You're just being unfair and unreasonable. I've done nothing but work hard for you brothers in this congregation. It, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. Brother Brown, we understand you're upset. Perhaps it would be a good idea if we offered a prayer. Would you mind if I did that? Sure, if you want to say a prayer, go ahead. Thank you for allowing me to pray. Be assured that the brothers prayerfully considered this recommendation. They weighed all the facts. Brother Brown, the brothers here, they love you. We would like for you to consider something that David said is found in Psalm 141 and verse five. These brothers here, they love you, your family, and the congregation. I don't know about that. It just makes me so angry. It's, these brothers don't even want me on the body anymore. Hurtful. I can understand how you might feel, but in reality, the brothers do want you on the body, and they hope that you can return. Let me ask you, do you think that the elder body is accountable to Jehovah to uphold his high standards for appointed men? And isn't that what you would encourage them to do? Yes. That's why when we weighed all the facts and the scriptural qualifications, as well as considering the direction from Jehovah's organization, the body of elders and I decided that you no longer meet the qualifications for an appointed man. I understand what you're saying, but I do not agree with this decision. Prayerfully think about what we talked about today. And of course, if it is your decision to appeal, please consult the information that's found in the Shepherd Book, Chapter 8, Paragraph 39. Pois é, vocês puderam ver como a faculdade é perigosa nas testemunhas de Jeová. Agora deixa o teu gostei nesse vídeo, compartilha no grupo da congregação e deixa a sua opinião sobre o que você acabou de assistir. O que, que você acha? Você acha que está certo? Você acha que está errado? Sua opinião é muito importante no canal do Pioneiro.